So one, I'm a bit of a fan of Ray Dalio's book, uh, Principles. And if you haven't read it, I definitely would recommend it. I mean, he's interesting because he's, he's a hedge fund leader, right? He's a financial guy. And he kind of learned the importance of understanding how people are wired, as he calls it. Um, and because of the different ways our brains are wired, we all experience reality in different ways. And so we all have a bit of a distorted view, actually. None of us are right. And this is something we need to get to grips with. And if we want to know what's true and what to do about it, you need to understand your own brain. And you need to understand how your team are wired as well. If we want to maximize their impact and their contribution. And we all want a team that feels potent, right? But first, you have to get your own act together. You know, when you're managing a team or leading a team, uh, and you're either not sure of your own impact or the impact that people in the team have, this is a great way of finding out a bit more about it. I mean, companies already use sort of information about people's expertise, their experience on their CV, and their personality, are they introverted or extroverted? But this tool is unique in that it focuses on impact and your impact is highly visible and makes a big difference to the kinds of results you can achieve and also makes a big difference to the dynamic of the team. Um, so let's have a look at what the GC index is. Um, so it is a tool, you, you respond to roughly 50 something questions and it gives you feedback um, through the lens of this framework. And uh, it was originally designed to find out what, um, what are the ingredients of game-changing people and pivoted to become a tool to find out about the ingredients of game-changing teams. And the research shows that when you're looking at game-changing impact, two things really drove it. One was creativity or imagination your capacity for original thinking and the, the other was your drive to turn ideas into reality which they called obsession so there are five possible profiles that result from this um, which they call proclivities a, a positive inclination to behave in a certain way there are the strategists and the game changers at the top the strategist being the pragmatic that is focused on mapping the future, the game changer being the obsessive, the one who wants to transform the future, the one who's always focusing on a new idea or innovation. And then at the bottom, we have the those who are focused on the tangible pursuit of particular outcomes or excellence. These are the implementers, the pragmatists, and the polishers who want to really refine uh, a product or a process and learn from experience and in the middle we have the playmaker who is driven by collaborative endeavor and collective contribution so all of these roles rub along more or less in a team and you start to think about your team and what you have in your team um, the strategists tend to view the implementers as being a bit down in the weeds the implementers think of the strategies as having their heads in the clouds the game changers are really or rather focused obsessively on their own idea and it might be a great idea but they're annoying the rest of the team because they won't stop going on about it whilst the polisher thinks nobody's got high standards and the playmakers scratching their head wondering how on earth they found themselves in the same room with this bunch of people so it's really quite useful to understand the mix and nature of the contributions you have in your team and to try and get the best out of those contributions because when you bring them together they can be enormously powerful that's one of the things i really like about this tool um you know every team needs this capacity to create original ideas make sense of them make them happen make them brilliant and work together to achieve that end rather than fall out over it and just to help guide you through this, um, a strategist is somebody who's really good at seeing the future and engaging others with a really clear sense of direction about that future. The game changers are those individuals who really come up with the ideas and new possibilities and transformational ideas. And then we have the playmakers who are really focused on getting the best out of their colleagues individually and collectively. Um, the implementers who 
are sharply focused on getting things done, such you know who and when and how and how fast. All of those questions are really on the tip of the tongue of an implementer. And lastly, the polisher they they focus very much on continuous improvement in the pursuit of excellence. So, see, one of the things about this is if you're aware of your strengths and the way in which you operate best, you have the power to choose people around you who complement those strengths rather than simply duplicate them. And I think that's one of the things that great leaders do. They surround themselves with people who are better at the things they're not particularly good at. <clears throat> How does this help? Well, one thing I wanted to say is I had, um, I was dealing with a leadership team uh, of this ride heading business I mentioned earlier. And, the, C, the CFO turned out to be a playmaker, whilst the CEO was a very strong game changer. And uh, the, the CFO looked at this and he said, now I realize what kind of leader I really am. And I was confused about it because of the way I focus on relationships. Now I realize I have a very important contribution to play. And he did because he was helping this CEO who was a game changer who was constantly introducing new ideas into the business to slow down his rate of innovation, to give the business time to focus on execution so that they could really scale the business effect effectively and efficiently. I also have one person in my team who, when they looked at their profile, was quite tearful about it. And, and I said, what, <laughs> why are you tearful about it? And it turned out, I mean, she came out as a polisher and she was finding that when proposals were going out to clients. They had been altered since she last saw them. And she was a bit distressed by the fact that it didn't have the quality that she had put into it when it left her desk. So the best thing to do with something like that is to put her at the end of the process so that she has the, the final word on quality. Um, earlier, I talked about the fact that we have voices in our head and those voices can be helpful and sometimes less helpful. Well, this might help you to connect with that a bit further. So I'll give you an example. Here's the, take the strategist at the top. Um, I have no doubt, by the way, you're probably following your own line in this, having picked which of these profiles best represents you. If you take the strategist and you think about where you are in the crisis, your existing strategy has been completely upended unceremoniously. You probably feel disoriented. So your mission is to start collaborating with others to build a new plan that sort of does reflect the latest and best assessments of the new world, right? So you've got to try and develop a more agile approach that's more resilient to changes in context than the one that you had. And that will give you a sense of clarity about what needs to be done. Um, but you're gonna to have to be agile as all of us will. So um, it's just an example of how um, thinking about tapping into your strengths can be carried over into looking at your team. And if you understand their best contribution, you can help them through this crisis as well. So what that looks like is you know getting to understand them a little bit more deeply than you do at the moment perhaps with or without a tool like the gc index if you've got literally no cash and it's impractical for you to do this for some reason right now think about other ways you can really get to know them better try and understand what's their best impact and what are the self-limiting beliefs that they have you know what's causing them stress what would unlock their energy and productivity and try and help every member of your team to perform so you have a really high performing team coming out of this crisis one of the things i think looking back at all the teams i'm working with is that many of them are actually getting stronger during the crisis even though their business is under a lot of financial stress and I can tell you there's one business that um, I, I hope he's on the call, but Zora and his team at Paradox Hospitality, they've, thanks to Zora's vision, they have adopted the GC index for their Maslina Resort project. So they, I mean, they used it in hiring. And also he's used it to help strengthen teamwork in his immediate team. 
So uh, I mentioned uh, Pure Pursuits in Colorado. We carried out the GC index on everybody coming on that pursuit. And I shared this picture with the team during the, um, the Pure Pursuit when we were at the Little Nelling um, Aspen. And uh, this is just a, a set of uh, individual debriefs from A through O for all of the people who were on the uh, Pure Pursuit. So you can see we had a full range of profiles. Um, there were seven game changers, which perhaps isn't surprising in that there's a lot of very driven, uh, quite creative business founders uh, on the program. So, you know, look at, for example, profile A, uh, very strong uh, right-hand side profile with lots of obsession. Same for profile G, um, very dominant uh, game-changing proclivity relentless energy and focus around new ideas and innovation. Um, we also had four implementers on this group. So look at, for example, profile I, a 10 out of 10. Um, any score above seven is a high score. So this is a very delivery focused, very pragmatic leader with quite a strong sense of purpose. Look at that strategy score just behind it, an eight. So this isn't somebody who just wants to be a headless chicken. This is somebody who wants to really execute in line with purpose. We also had three playmakers, for example, profile O, where the dominant kind of approach is to bring the team together and get the best out of the different contributions in the team. Um, and that's the team profile. You can see there this sort of combination of overarching strength around game changer and implementer. So this is a team that typically would be very entrepreneurial, very good at coming up with ideas and executing them quickly, but wouldn't necessarily be that great at scaling a business because it's not so strategic and doesn't continuously learn from experience and continuously improve. So it's very interesting the sorts of insights this can generate. So I'm gonna wrap up now, I mean, question for you is what you're going to ask me questions but my question for you is what's your leadership response and whatever it is you've you've got to focus on trying to get your team aligned and performing with impact and that means you know forging a view as a group and backing yourself and having the courage to back yourself through this and not lose sight of that vision and focus and I'll finish with this idea, the Stockdale paradox, which was included in Jim Collins' book called Good to Great. And he interviewed a guy called Admiral Stockdale, who was um, the most senior ranking uh, American military officer who was imprisoned in, in Hanoi. And he, it, was, it was known as the Hanoi Hilton. Um, it wasn't a good place to be. He was tortured continuously during that eight year period. And, and uh, Jim Collins asked him, you know, how did you survive that experience? And he said, I retain faith all the way through that somehow I will prevail regardless of the difficulties. And then he was asked the question, who, who didn't make it out? And he said, oh, that was easy. That was the optimists. The optimists were always thinking I'll be out by Christmas and Christmas came and went and they were still in prison and they kind of died of disappointment. So his other gift to us to think about is you've got to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be, but never lose that faith that you'll find a way through in the end. So question for you is how can you and your team embrace that paradox? Because that's not going to be easy, right?